Chrono Trigger is sometimes considered the best RPG ever made. But is it really an RPG? After studying the subject for a decade, I have actually realized that yes, yes it is. Not the result I wanted. Killian, two videos ago you said all Japanese games are bad, but here you are praising Chrono Trigger. You can't just stop being xenophobic. Okay, let me explain. Chrono Trigger was conceived by Akira Toriyama, creator of Dragon Ball Z Abridged, Yuji Hori, creator of uh, Chrono Trigger, and Sakaguchi creator of millions of weeaboos. They came up with the idea while studying computer graphics in the United States. That means Chrono Trigger was born on US soil. That makes it an American citizen. They developed this 15 hour long game that feels like 40 hours. Usually that's considered a bad thing. But here it's not considered a good thing, but it's considered a thing. The game starts with the main character, Chrono Trigger, waking up. You know he's the protagonist because he has spiky red hair. There is a fairy in town to celebrate the year 1000, but they celebrate the new year in summertime? Silly fantasy countries. At the fair, Chrono runs into this girl named Marl. Then she decides to spend time with Chrono, which tells us that Chrono is attractive. Then they do normal fair stuff like fighting robots. Luca, Chrono's best friend, has invented a teleportation device. Marl decides to try it out, but the machine reacts to the metal necklace and sends her back in time. That's why when you're at the airport, they ask you to take off all your metals before you go through those terrorist scanners. Too much iron and you can end up in ancient Rome. Chrono goes after her and travels back 400 years. But because the planet has moved quite a lot since then, he ends up in a vacuum and dies. Fortunately, there's a guy in the Middle Ages that looks exactly like him. And no one will know because he's a silent protagonist. So Marl was actually the Princess Nadia. And when she ended up here, everyone mistook her for a kidnapped queen. Even though she's like 10 years younger. Let's be honest here, the king knows. The king doesn't care. But because they stop searching for the real queen, she dies and Marl disappears. Kinda like that movie from the 80s, starting Michael... No, not doing it. We go to the church and meet Frog. No one cares he's a frog. People probably didn't even notice. They were pretty ugly back in the Middle Ages. I mean, wh what am I looking at here? Is that even a human? The queen was kidnapped by a yellow mole. Yay, we did it! The queen is back, Marl is back. Uh, by now you probably want me to explain how Chrono supposedly died, but what about all the other people? Uh, but I'm not gonna do that because I broke myself into a corner. Back in the year 1000, Chrono is arrested for kidnapping the princess and dragged to court. Your Honor, we believe Mr. Trigger kidnapped her to cut off her ears and create a necklace. We don't have any proof other than the fact that he picked up her necklace before he picked up her. Everyone agrees and Chrono is now in jail. But right before he gets to end his miserable existence, he gets saved by Luca, who has finally snapped and is going on a killing spree but is using this rescue as an excuse. They kill a bunch of underpaid government workers and a robot dragon. Then they actually kidnap the princess and travel to the future. You idiot! If you are escaping from someone, travel to the past. Now all they have to do is wait. Welcome to 2300. The future is pretty bad, but they have what? 1300 years of new and fresh and funny maymays. But instead of checking that out, they decide they want to go back. Eventually they find this computer that tells us where we are supposed to go, and what destroyed the world. In the year 1999, a giant monster came from underground. Wrong again, scientists! We know the monster is evil. Not only did it destroy civilization, but it couldn't wait one more year. To get to the new portal you have to race, but I intentionally lost because I wasn't comfortable destroying a guy in a wheelchair. And he calls me worthless, okay then. Play with fire, you get iced. Way to the portal is blocked, so we resurrect this robot and then these robots beat him up. I don't want to get involved. He did it! We go through the portal and end up in the end of time? This senior citizen tells you that only three people can travel through a portal. I was wondering how that works. Is it mass? Because the robot can cover three people. And this place, how did it get all this stuff? But also oxygen, gravity, vitamin D. And then I watched The Martian and it all made sense. That's not a man. 
That's a cactus! In the Middle Ages, everyone was dying of the plague, uh, corpses rotting on the streets, but that place is better than this one, so we go there! The humans are at war with Magus, which is a wizard named Magnus, but he has severe dyslexia, and he created Lavos. His troops have taken over a bridge. Ossi, Magus' second in command, summons a giant skeleton. Then. Why even use these small skeletons? We also find out that a legendary hero has appeared, and this has caused Frog to go into a clinical depression. To be the hero, you need a necklace and a legendary sword. We fight a fat yet ripped guy to get the broken sword, and we steal the necklace from the actual legendary hero. You're becoming a surgeon and you're liking it. On the blade it says Melchior. That's a swordsmith who lives 400 years later. What a mystery! Or it's just a very common name, but he tells you that to repair the sword he needs a red crystal that doesn't exist anymore. So we go back to prehistory. In 65 million BC, humans are fighting the reptilians. Because the humans are cool and reptiles are nerds. The only thing these cavemen care about is Smirnoff, so they immediately throw a party. When the chief is absolutely shitfaced, she gives Chrono the red crystal. This could be illegal, but these idiots haven't invented a court system yet. Then they fight a ripped dinosaur. Lots of ripped creatures in this game. This was the original concept art for Lavos. The sword gets Frog out of his depression. Wrong again, psychologist. We see this flashback where we find out that Frog is actually a guy named Glenn. Really? Maid just killed his best friend and turned him into a frog. But he got a free necklace, so it was not all bad. The sword cuts open a mountain. That wasn't advertised. Then they enter the castle and fight this guy and this guy. I died here, forgot to save, ended up back here and developed alcoholism. Why does Ossie just stand there? But he escapes, and we are ready to fight mages and stop him from creating Lavos. Guys, I did not create Lavos. How much spare time do you think I have? I am going to fight him, so calm down. Just gonna summon a little bit of Lavos. But his dyslexia causes him to misread the spell, and they are sent back in time. The gang wakes up in the Stone Age, and they tell us a couple of their friends have been kidnapped. Lucas suggests Yen. Side. So that's what we do. But when everyone is extinct, Lavos comes down from space and destroys the reptile's lair, so it was all for nothing. Hey, another portal! Could lead anywhere, but risks are fun! Oh, we fucked up. Welcome to 12,000 BC and the Kingdom of Seal. It's a kingdom for magic users. People who are not magic users live in a cave. Just because you can't use magic doesn't mean you shouldn't take a bath. Seal's greatest achievement is that the world uses their exact currency for 14,000 years. Also, no inflation. But they also have a machine that drains Lavo's energy. But they have yet to invent security, so Chrono visits the Queen's meeting. But they get captured. The princess rescues them and says, Rescue the Guru of Life, who is trapped on the mountain of Whoa! It's called that because that's where they send people who make inappropriate comments. But a man called the Prophet shows up and throws us back into the portal. So they decide to take a vacation to the future, and there they find a time machine. The gang goes back and climbs the mountain of Whoa! and set the Guru free. It's the Swordsmith! Or someone who looks exactly like him and shares his name. Statistically, it's very possible. He gives us a knife that can destroy the Lavos machine. Currently the machine is in a palace in the ocean. We need to teleport there because the developer has not programmed swimming. In our way is the SEAL General Dalton, who is working as security. Oh my god, we changed history! We enter the palace and get to the machine, then we stick the knife in it. Yeah! And then the knife makes the machine even stronger. You traitor! You've doomed us all! Lavos is awakened and I defeat him. So I had to reload the game because you're not supposed to. When the party is dead, the prophet reveals himself to be Magus. And then he gets his ass kicked. Then Chrono sacrifices himself and dies, so he's dead. Then Lavos goes back to sleep again, because he did the five more minutes thing. The princess teleports them out of there, and then they wake up in the village. And the ocean palace is flying now. But we get kidnapped by Dalton, and there's another prison escape. All good games have at least two prison escapes. Dalton puts wings on the time machine. What is fascinating about this scene is that- Wait. We have liftoff, Houston. I have so many questions. They fight Dalton on the time machine. Good thing they are JRPG characters, so they don't fall off. Airship crashes, and we go up this cape because there's nothing else to do. Here we meet a familiar face. Okay, Froggy, maybe you are angry about the killing of your best friend and all that. 
but I know how to save Chrono, so I guess that makes us... besties? We speak to the guy that built the time machine that we stole. He says climb a mountain and that they need a doll that looks exactly like Chrono. It can be bought from Norstein Beckler in 1000 AD for 30,000 money. They climb the mountain and go back to this exact moment and switch out Chrono with the doll. Wait, why did we even need to replace him with the doll? Oh, they scammed me. There are lots of great side quests before the final showdown. There is one quest where you leave the robot in the desert for 400 years and then he dies. Maybe he can be repaired, but the desert thing is not covered by the warranty. We also get to see Luca watch her mother lose her legs. Another side mission is where Frog finds out why everyone in the Middle Ages have cool names like Magus, Cyrus, Slash and he is stuck with the name Glenn. My favorite side mission is the one where Chrono travels back to the 50s and meet up with Doc Brown. Damn it! Almost made it through the entire video. There are 20 endings to Chrono Trigger depending on when you fight Lavos. The hardest way to beat him is to engage him in an intelligent discussion, because he has had 65 million years to think. You can fly the time machine into his shell and break it, I don't believe that for a second. Lavos destroyed his own shell to support the defense industry. If you don't fight him at all, he will eventually come to you and ask what's up. In the normal ending you enter the flying palace and confront the Queen of Seal. No I'm not gonna fight you, I'm a queen, not a warrior! Fight the Lavos machine! Oh right, that's an inanimate object. Fine, I'm summoning Lavos. Here we are, the final showdown. First part, Lavos transforms into previous bosses. You idiot. Don't use attack patterns we already know. Then his head explodes and we enter. Oh shit, Lavos is actually Cell. Then that form dies and oh shit, there's a third form. Oh, that's it? Huh. Then they celebrate. Yay, everyone returns to their times and it's very sad. Final thought, every game made before the original Xbox is bad, but Chrono Trigger is less bad. And that is the Killian experience. Hi there, thanks for 1 million views on the previous video. I now have a Steam group and a subreddit, yay! In the next recap I'm doing a shorter game. Yes, Chrono Trigger is only 15 hours, but they managed to cram 40 hours into those 15. 